today we're going to talk about measuring sound quality. Can it be done? And our question comes from Adrian in Europe. <laughs> Adrian lives in a pretty big space. I, I, oh, all right, I'm not going there. I'm sure Adrian has a country within Europe that Adrian lives in, but we don't know what it is. Anyway, Adrian in Europe writes, is there a way of measuring sound quality? I know frequency is one, but I also have heard uh, another one called imaging. Are there any tools to do this? That's a question we get asked a lot. And the answers are rather difficult and uh, divisive. And they're, if we break down the way people think about audio, we have the engineers who are put their engineering blinders on. Then we have the audiophiles who won't look at engineering and they only put their ears on. And then we have people like ourselves who, who do both. So we are very big into engineering. I, we would not have built all these products over the last 40 years if we weren't into engineering, if we didn't know a lot about it and you know everything to do with producing products. But um, we combine the art of engineering and the art of listening together in an amalgam that creates the final product. But one of the biggest complaints our engineering department routinely has and our director of engineering, uh, in fact, we, I was just in a meeting a couple of hours ago talking with Matt, who is our engineering director, and he's pulling his hair out going, why can't we measure this stuff? I mean, we, we were listening to different compiles of the FPGA code for our direct stream DAC, and each compile, and this is where we take a high-level language like C, which is what it's written in, and we compile it down to machine language called assembly that is what actually runs the device. And every time the high-level language is compiled down to this low-level language, it sounds a little different. And this impact of sound quality uh, on, on a compile uh, increases along with the complexity of the software or the firmware of whatever we're doing. So the more complex it gets, the more this phenomena happens. And uh, not to di divert, but I'll give you another example. It, it, it is well known that complex systems, like, like right here, I've got my Mac computer, or this iPhone that I'm photographing this on. These are very complex systems with, with a lot of software involved and a hell of a lot of complex circuitry involved. And the more complex it gets, the more each of these products taken together perform differently. So you could take 10 iPhones and if you measure their performance and what they do, they'll all be a little different, all of them, in terms of speed, in terms of um, how many times they make a mistake, how many times they crash, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So if you take um, oh, a, a butter knife, right, it's going to perform pretty much the same. It's not complex. So every time you go to cut something or slice something, that butter knife can perform the same. Take an iPhone, not so much. The same can be said with any complex system. The greater the complexity, the more variability that you're going to wind up having. And so anyway, Matt is pulling his hair out going, can't we just come up with a way to measure what we're hearing? And so far, the answer is no. We can measure some of the aspects that we believe make the difference in sound quality, like jitter, like power supply noise, ground noise, EMI, which is how much a circuit radiates, how sensitive a circuit is to external radiation. So if you take a circuit board of a DAC and you set it out in free space around other pieces of audio equipment that are spewing radiation, EMI, and they all do it. Our products, everybody's products, radiates out, and you can measure it. A, a bare circuit board is going to be much more sensitive in terms of pollution uh, received from 
the radiated EMI than one inside of a box. So if we shield it inside of a metal box, it's going to be much less sensitive. And the, the reason I bring all that up is that we know there are many factors that we can measure that affect sound quality. We don't actually have a meter for sound quality. We have to use our ears and years of training and a very high resolving system like we have in Music Room One. And one of, uh, one of Paul's uh, Ask Paul videos that you can find in this series will show you our Music Room and you can go see. It's just part of the equation. In simple terms, yes, there are certainly pieces of equipment, like we own a, a suite of products called the Audio Precision, or APs. And this is a, a I think they're out of Oregon, um, near where Tektronix and all that is. And these are computer-operated audio testing uh, products. There's a suite of them. We can look down to see some very low-level things and, and standard measurements. THD, total harmonic distortion, intermodulation distortion. We can see whether things are slewing or there's you know problems with rise time. Any of the obvious signs that people have used for years, um, we can certainly measure those things and they certainly have an impact on sound. But in general, we listen because once you have your products measuring at low distortion levels for the standard distortion measurement uh, artifacts, as I've just described, um, then it all comes down to how it sounds. And they can sound really different depending on the software, the implementation, all, all manners of, of uh, differences that we hear in these complex systems. And again, the more complex these systems get, the greater impact that all of these things have on the way it sounds and the harder it is to measure. So we're not making a whole lot of progress in terms of coming up with that magic thing that goes, a meter that goes, wow, really good sounding, great imaging. And this one, eh, not so much. We're farther away from that now than we have ever been. It doesn't sound any more hom homogenous. It doesn't sound like everything's getting so much better. It's still diverging big time. So I, Gosh, I wish anybody has a meter that's going to measure that. I would be the first to spend good money on it. Wish we had that. Great question, and thank you for asking. Bye.